I'm Hilary Moss. I'm the Senior Lecturer in Music Therapy at the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance at the University of Limerick. I'm really passionate about the interaction between arts, health and well-being, particularly as a musician and as a music therapist. What I'd like to talk to, about today is whether music is good for your health. So we know historically that music and the arts have always been interacting with health and well-being. So for example, the ancient Egyptians believe so strongly that religion and health and the arts were so connected that their priests had to train as doctors and musicians. We know that ancient Rome believed that playing music would cure snake bites and insomnia. But in modern healthcare, it's one of the few places in society where there is no music or art. So if you're recovering from a stroke, you're in hospital for six to eight weeks, you may well find there's no music, there's no access to your favorite songs, there's no pictures on the wall that mean anything to you. And the place can be quite neglected, and I would argue even deprived of aesthetics. So my research began by looking at aesthetic deprivation in healthcare, in hospitals, in nursing homes, and looking at what arts people wanted to engage with when they're ill and how those might benefit them. We know, for example, that if you listen to your five favorite CDs when you've had a stroke, that you will do better on a range of variables. For example, um, your physical, your cognitive recovery is actually enhanced if you have access to that music that you love in the acute stages of stroke. However, I would argue that we're in a real problem here. In modern healthcare, it's very rare to have access to your five favorite pieces of music. And why have we become like that in our modern health system? But as a music therapist, I think it goes further than that. So my interest is also around the psychological benefits. We ran one of the largest international studies on singing and health and asked over 2,000 choir members what the benefits were of singing in a, in a choir. And they, they answered on a range of variables, including social health, so reducing social isolation, their physical health, their lung control, uh, re relaxation, stress relief, all kinds of different things. And we're beginning to look at that even more um, at the University of Limerick. And there's a strong group of researchers interested in singing and health. We also know psychologically that music plays a huge part in our lives. If you think about funerals, the music is often the thing you remember and the person you remember is associated with a song that means something. So too in music therapy, I work with people uh, with mental health issues and particularly with people with dementia. And, and I look at how we use music to express ourselves and communicate and share our feelings when we can't use words. So in dementia, Dementia is a group of illnesses, the most common would be Alzheimer's disease. We know that people lose the ability to talk and sometimes to talk coherently. They may not recognize people, recognize people they love anymore. But uh, I'm finding in my work, my practice and my research, that people can sing when they can't speak anymore. They can sing a well-known song that they remember and they can connect with loved ones through songs that they shared through their lives. So I've been working on a method called life review through music where you build up a, a history of a person through music and then the person with dementia can listen to that in their care home. This research is really relevant today with the growing numbers of people with dementia, the growing number of older people in our society and we need to look at ways that we can improve quality of care, we can transform health services to better the lives of people with dementia. And on that note, all of my research is interdisciplinary. So I work with doctors in the School of Medicine here at the University of Limerick. I work with clinical therapists in physiotherapy, speech therapy, and I also work with nurses. And all of my, my research is collaborative with those people to try and see how we can use music and art to uh, improve the health outcomes and the well-being of people who are living with long-term illnesses. Music and arts in healthcare often fight for a place amongst the other priorities of healthcare. We're very consumed at the moment in our society by cost effectiveness, by efficiency, by reducing risk. And it can be very difficult to bring in creative and arts activities for people in hospital. So that's another reason why the research is important. It backs up with evidence why this is important to people. There are two kind of reasons for the arts in healthcare. One is an instrumental reason. So the arts are useful in helping perhaps people to, to exercise, just as we use music to exercise in the gym. So people who are rehabilitating and doing the same exercises day after day may find music helps them to complete those exercises. But it also has an intrinsic value and the arts are important in our society. They are part of our everyday life and without them we have less opportunity to live a full life. 
So on that basis, we also need to be providing evidence of how the arts play a part in our humanity uh, and in our society at large. The other part of my research is very much centred on the people who use the health services. And I've been using arts-based research methods with my colleagues in the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance uh, to create work that reflects the experience of people who are living with an illness. So a couple of examples. We worked with a composer called Ian Wilson, a renowned Irish composer, who created a work based on his residency in a hospital with people with stroke and Parkinson's disease. And he created new works which were performed by the Irish Chamber Orchestra, who were resident here in Limerick, uh, to illuminate the experience of people living with stroke and Parkinson's disease from their perspective. And the arts can play a really important role in bringing a new perspective to a problem that perhaps people who work in the health services become very used to. So uh, we've used those, those artworks, we've used films that capture illnesses from the person's point of view, like The Beautiful Mind, uh, which is a beautiful film about schizophrenia, or Still Alice, which is about a woman with dementia. And we've used them with medical students um, to help them to train, to think about the person behind the illness. Um, it gets very uh, normal in hospitals to get used to illness and to forget that people are living with huge losses and huge emotional outcomes of these illnesses. Um, similarly, we would have worked with visual artists to create artworks that reflect the experience of chronic pain. I'd like to also tell you about some research that's currently underway in Limerick with my colleagues, my PhD students. So we have two studies underway of music therapy with children with spinal injuries and acquired brain injury, looking how, at how music therapy might help with movement and uh, psychological recovery. And then also uh, a PhD study looking at music therapy with children with stammer. We're also hoping to start working with the hospital in Limerick um, to investigate how music therapy may support people with chronic pain. I think above all, the, the crux for me is about hearing what people have to say about their illness and the narrative of, of their illness journey through the arts. Sometimes when somebody is very compromised, so for example, again, a person with the late stages of dementia, they may not be able to talk or tell us how they are or participate in life in the normal ways. But being able to sing a song and joining musically gives a moment of hope and positivity. And it shows what people can do rather than what they can't do. And for me, that's the crux of why I do this research and why I work in this field. And I'm delighted to be here in Limerick. We've set up an arts and health research cluster of interested experts who come together to work together in this area. And I'd be delighted uh, to hear from people who would like to work with us. I'm Hilary Moss and you can contact me at the University of Limerick.